Uh, last night, the University of Kentucky announced that Alex Poitras will be returning for his sophomore year. Poitras averaged 11 points and six rebounds a game last season. And with Archie Goodwin departing for the NBA, that leaves Poitras, Willie Cauley-Stein, and Kyle Wilcher as the players definitely returning from last year's squad. They're going to be joined by the most talented freshman class and maybe all of college basketball history with Aaron and Andrew Harrison, James Young, Marcus Lee, Dakari Johnson, Julius Randle, and Derek Willis. And six of those recruits are in Chicago right now for the McDonald's All-American game, which of course is later tonight at 9.30 p.m. And UK missed out on Aaron Gordon to Arizona, but John Calipari still has a scholarship for Andrew Wiggins, who's the number one recruit in the nation. And Wiggins has said that he right now does not have a timeline for his decision. And there may or may not be a spot on the roster for Madison Central Guard. Dominique Hawkins, Coach Cal met with him last week. No announcement has been made until he gets back from spring break next week. So that leaves Nerlens Noel, of course, in limbo. He has not decided whether he's an NBA-bound draft pick or if he's going to stick around for next year. Uh, he is expected to head to the league. John Hood and Jared Polson, their scholarships are still up in the air as well. And tonight, to break it all down, Roster Badness 2013. We have the whole band back together. Parent Johnson the and Mark Krebs. What's up, guys? Oh. Party? Oh. Right? <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Well, I guess the, the big news, of course, is, is Poitras coming back. He was uh, even you know when Archie Goodwin made his decision, there were still a lot of questions about Poitras. Draft Express said maybe he would leave. Perrin, was it the right decision to come back? And if so, what does he bring to the team? I mean, he, he averaged 11 and six. In any other school, you average 11 and six. People are like really excited that yeah. you're coming back to school. <laughs> so I mean. He's, he brings a different demeanor to the court in the terms of I think he can play both positions, both small forward and power forward. So if they are able to get Andrew Wiggins, you can still slide him over to the four. You can bring Kyle Wiltshire off the bench. So, I mean, I don't really think it changes a lot. So, I mean, by the same time, Alex Poitras just probably wants to play the perimeter a little bit more, right. but I don't think he's too excited about if they get Andrew Wiggins. But there's, that all remains to be seen as of now. Kind of like icing on the cake at this point for the roster they have. And I do, you make a good point. The versatility was missing this past year because they didn't have the bodies. And then with the 2012 team with Anthony Davis and Kid Gilchrist, they could do different lineups. Darius Miller could play basically one to four for the most part. Mark, when you look at Alex Poitras, how does he fit in next year? We've seen him in the perimeter. We've seen him inside. What kind of role do you think he will take on uh, to better prepare himself maybe for the NBA? Well, I think it's, uh, he, it fills a very important position. I think uh, Perrin was right. 11-6 and six last year. Those numbers are great. The only problem was he was very inconsistent from game to game, his attitude on the court. Um, but he's a guy that's intimidating. Um, he's been through an entire season, which is huge for this right. uh, incoming class. And I think he's a guy that going on the court, he's going to play a lot of minutes, even though people from last year are probably like, his minutes are going to go down. Yeah. I still think he's going to play a lot of minutes. And I'm hoping that he has a Josh Harrelson type year where he starts waking up in the morning, working out, getting ready, and changing his attitude because his talent was there and his athleticism. But if you couple that with talent I th or with uh, an attitude, I think that's where he'll take it to the next level. He's a guy that they say maybe is a four-year player. Do you guys think just quickly one year and he's gone or do you think he's going to stick around three, four years? Do you think? Um, well, you know, it'll be easy for him next year because the guys around him will be a lot better. It'll be a, they'll be better basketball players. Right. Yeah. Like people are like down on Kyle Wiltshire this year. Oh, yeah. Kyle Wiltshire, he's so terrible. Yeah. Well, Kyle's not bad. He's pretty much the same guy he was the year before. The pieces around him weren't as good. Right. So now it's, a lot of stuff comes back on him. So now when you look at that, I think you'll see Kyle have a better year and yeah. other guys around. I mean, and all those guys will have a better year because they'll all be a, the threats to score 20 points a game in any given night. You think he leaves after next year, Mark? I do. I think this year, especially how good they're going to be if they win a national championship, like Coach Cal always yeah. says, when the tide rises, all the boats rise, I think you'll see his stock rise as well because he's that athletic He's that athletic and that talented with a good team around him and, and, and a better season. I think, yeah. he does, I think he goes to the NBA next year. It seems sure. easier to fit in, too, with those yeah. other guys around him. Yeah. There are questions now about how that's going to affect Andrew Wiggins. Uh, he's going to make his announcement in a couple weeks. He said he has until May, so he's going to take his time <laughs> with it. He's a guy that, if he comes in, is going to take a lot of minutes from, from Alex Poitras, maybe start over him. How much, Mark, do you think this affects Alex Poitras uh, or, or affects Andrew Wiggins? I'm sorry, Poitras' decision. I don't think it matters too much because I feel like Andrew Wiggins is pretty comfortable in his talents and, and yeah. he'll get his point. <laughs> he'll, he'll get his. Um, I don't think he's too worried. I do think that it, it matters for the team, but I think it also allows him to say, hey, if I come into this role, I have a guy that can come in. There's not 100% pressure on me right. to perform yeah. because I have a guy that I can look up to. And I'm hoping that, that Poitras could be that guy, you know, yeah. show him the ropes, uh, workouts, what they need to do in practice. And I think Andrew Wiggins, that might help him make his yeah. decision because 100% of the pressure will not be on him. Is there, is there a value in that, apparently? I mean, Andrew Wiggins is a great player. He's going to start probably wherever he goes <laughs> and, play, and be the best player on the team. 
But having having those guys that he can count on, we talked the other day about the freshmen, the recruits, having those guys. But now these veterans, Mark mentions Alex Poitras, playing pretty much the same position. But is there almost an advantage to having a guy like that? Well, I mean, you know, Alex, Alex Poitras knows the system. He knows yeah. what to expect. He's been through the rigors of everything. He's been He's been through the hardest thing, which is, they had a down year, yeah. and the whole fan base was like, come on, guys, what the, what the heck's going on, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So now you have a guy like Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins is going to start. I don't care what anybody yeah. says. Let's yeah. just be real about <laughs> it. He's going to start. Yeah. So Alex, this, use, this, use this as motivation for right. him for next year. Because yeah. if not, then he's obviously not going to play. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's Andrew Wiggins. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that competition will decide who plays. And that could push them, everybody, like you said, the, the ships and the boats yeah, and the rising, whatever it was. Water, yeah. Yeah. oceans. Well, my question is, who gets the number 22 if Wiggins comes in? Is that a veteran or the better player? Who wins that fight pairing in the locker room? I mean, if you want to play nice, I mean, you could give it to him. But, I mean, if you're all about making him earn something – let I mean, make him earn it. Yeah. yeah. Veteran gets it. Yeah, veteran. Usually. Then, that's you, you, you had a, a jersey problem, didn't you? When you, you I, I didn't, but I did, apparently, because I didn't know Eric Bledsoe coming in, like number yeah. 12. If you see him now with the Clippers, he's number yeah. 12. <laughs> I didn't know. It never <laughs> once came to me and asked me. I would have given him the number 12. But, uh, yeah, so he, he, he took another. He took 24. But uh, never an issue. Um, I know it was an issue with, like, Ramon Harris had about 18 numbers yeah, that's throughout right. his <laughs> college career. I think my, uh, Michael Porter switched his number yeah. a lot. So who knows? Yeah, no, and, and you beat Eric Bledsoe. So then he's still it's probably salty. I think I intimidated there. Eric a little yeah. bit. I'm not going to lie. And, Just, <laughs> and the donkey, too. We, had, we talked about the donkey, apparently. Mark's donkey is pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, I've heard. I mean, I'm, I'm on a commercial. <laughs> let's be honest. No, I, I saw it. I saw it. Drew, Drew. Drew Franklin told me about it. I saw it. I was KSTV, like, Get out of here. KCB dunk contest. He looks so soon. athletic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we asked people on Facebook to list who they would have in their starting lineup next year because of all the players coming in. And Derek Klein, Derek Klein, I'm sorry, said he'd list the Harrison Twins, James Young, Julius Randle, and Willie Cauley Stein. Alan Schneider, uh, he said he'd listed his guys as well. Um, when you look at the, at, the, at the roster and the players coming in, most people seem to think the Harrisons will start, Willie Cauley-Stein and Julius Randle, and then whether it's James Young, Alex Poitras, starting five mark next year, who would you put on the court if it started today? I would say all of those, and if Andrew Wiggins comes, you throw him in right. in that third spot, and I also think Alex Poitras, if he's back and Andrew Wiggins does not come to Kentucky, I think you put Alex Poitras in and then have Young come off the bench. And, yeah, it, it's the same type of thing. I know right. the, the Harrison twins are going to start, yeah. and then you're going to have Willie Cauley-Stein, who I think is going to have to earn minutes, but I think he's a, a piece of the puzzle they need, yeah. um, a big body. So it's still to be determined. I think Coach Cal, early in the season, the first ten games, you're going to see about fifth, five, six different starting lineups. Yeah. So just be and, ready for it. Yeah. And they, and they added a different look. And you can go with Poitras in that starting lineup. Then you have Young, who could play the shooting guard position, move guys around. Or you, you put Young out there, and you have Poitras coming in and can play the 3-4. If you're coaching, Perrin, who are the five players that you're going to put on the court? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cause a little controversy because the one, the one brother that plays point guard is a little bit better than the other, right, the one that right. plays shooting guard. Yeah. So I'm going to be selfish. I'm going to say Andrew Wiggins is quote-unquote coming to school. Yeah. I'm going to put the one of Harrison brothers at the one. I'm going to put James Young at the two, Andrew Wiggins at the three, Poitras at the four, and I'm going to put probably Willie Cauley Stein at the five. Any chance to Kari Johnson? I mean, he's a big, strong guy. Yes. Very similar to Julius Randle. I think more of a compliment. You're going to see him start games. You, you think he's good? he can beat out Absolutely. Willie Cauley Stein? I, I think he can beat him out or play together, depending on what, uh, who they're playing. If they're playing yeah. a team that's big and has big yeah. guys, I'd say they both start. I like him, uh, but the only reason why I pick Willie is because Willie – showed us a lot and he hasn't played a lot of basketball right, he was yeah. a football player playing basketball so when you factor in the fact that he's got some experience under his belt and a year of weight training I just like Willie because I think Willie gets off the floor and he's more athletic than Dakari John and he makes that lineup fast really yeah. fast with the Harrisons out there and even with Poitras Poitras is, is, is decently fast for his position and Julius Randle getting up and down the floor that's a fast lineup. Now, if you switch it out, you put Poitras at the four James Young at the three that's an even faster lineup getting up and down the court uh, of these guys coming in, and you look at Marcus Lee, who could be the third center at this point, number two center in the country, <laughs> third center on the roster, there are so many flexible options. Is, is there any concern, Perrin, that people are going to be unhappy? They're going to expect more than they're actually going to get out of next season because there are so many spots on the court. Well, I think Cal has already explained this to them, and I think all these guys have to understand that they're not going to come out and score 20 points every night because if that was the case, they all would have stayed their local, in their local states. Yeah. Like, you know, 
the young would have gone to Michigan, right. Lee would have gone to Cal or Stanford. Yeah. Or you can go all the way down the list with all those guys. So basically, they want to do something special and be a part of something special. And that's what they're basically saying when they all go into the same school. And where does Kyle Wilcher fit into all this? I mean, he's kind of the forgot guy. We just did a whole discussion and forgot all about him. He fills a role, but. but he but does. I'd say spot minutes. I think he's going to be the type of guy that can spread the floor out, uh, pick and pop guy. I think he can. This summer, if he gets stronger and, and starts rebounding the ball and playing with a sense of urgency, I think you can see him play more minutes, maybe steal some minutes from some of the guys. But at this moment, I think he's a guy that will spread the floor. I think when a game gets into the half court and you're not getting a lot of runouts, he's a guy that you want in the game because when you're playing the half court offense, you want to spread it out and, get, and keep as many open lanes as possible. So he's a guy that can step in and fill that role. Is there any chance he can play minutes at the three next year in Cal system? I mean, he's not at, defensively, it's going to be hard for him to do it, yeah. but can he get minutes? Because in the front court, it seems like there are a lot of guys that they would think would get a lot of minutes there. I, I think it's good. situational. I think if they're playing a team that's not very fast, if they're a slow team, yeah. I think he'll be able to guard a little bit better, and that would be a, a role he can fill on offense because then you can go back on defense and guard somebody else. If Coach Kyle ever implements a 1-3-1 one, one zone or something, that's a, a position he could be in because he can play in the 1-3-1 one, one zone and then be on offense at the three. Right. But it's going to take a hybrid type thing. Yeah. And, and I don't know exactly if he could do that against a fast team. I don't think he could guard a three. You, you think Wiltshire, how does he fit in next year, Perry? I think Kyle's going to get stronger and learn how to be a better power forward to score on a low block or a center because he, he can't guard. Yeah. Kyle Wilcher's best defense is a great offense. He's not he's he's Steve Nash in a six ten body. <laughs> so, Which is not a bad thing to me. No, yeah. not at all. Not at all. But I mean, like you like like Mark said about everything that he could possibly do, I think you're gonna see him come in a lot of games with pressure situations. Uh, he's gonna be the guy that always ends up getting the ball when this game's on the line to get yeah. fouled, to shooting free throws because obviously it's a terrific stroke. Yeah, it's, it, I'm excited, obviously, for this. They're gonna kill Louisville next year. Nah, I don't know. <laughs> hey, this year's not even over yet. Yeah. Well, it's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's for us. Yeah. <laughs>